Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth here. So I just wanted to share some thoughts in regards to uh, the tech industry should uh, take some responsibility for mental health. So, you know, mental health, anxiety, and depression, these things have been around for a long time, but now we're seeing them in masses. Um, and I do believe that social media and over consumption of social media use or just, you know, watching too much television has led us to be in a place of isolation, um, depression, and loneliness. And this is even more important to know now um, because with COVID-19, you know, if people are still being forced to stay inside or be isolated, this is going to have um, more damaging effects to mental health, especially because tech technology use will be increased. So some of these thoughts come from being on the using end of technology in addition to being on the coaching end of technology. So I'm seeing it from two different angles, from the people who are creating the, the technology or the algorithms and then um, being the consumer part. So I've just noticed, you, you know, you can go online and, and see all these ads about learn how to make six figures off of YouTube and Etsy and da 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 and a lot of what people are getting sucked into now is that people want financial freedom and or you know their business they want success to some degree there's nothing wrong with that but it's more difficult today being successful online because you're working and trying to fight against various algorithms um, that weren't necessarily in place to people who started you know, their business on YouTube or be, being a YouTube platform speaker seven years ago when, you know, technology was still pretty gritty. It wasn't, uh, you know, very edited videos. Um, so where this is going is that we're, being a health coach and kind of working with a ton of people in technology, I've noticed that a lot of those people are under high amounts of stress but they also have, you know, deep down anxiety or depression or they just don't really feel good about themselves or about life. And a lot of it is due to the stress that goes with um, with the job of creating these algorithms. Some people know what they're creating isn't necessarily beneficial, but we are easily influenced around in our environment and the people or the things that are around us. You know, research has indicated that you become like the five closest people in your life. So a lot of these individuals who are constantly surrounded by technology, they're working by themselves, they're alone. And so it's like their major influence becomes the computer and the algorithms and, you know, the data and the programming and we humans, like I've talked about this with my Christian friend who works uh, for for technology for the tech industry. You know, he base we basically have known for a long time that the physical body is like the hardware of the computer, and the mind is like the software. And so, what you ingest can easily adapt and influence your your life or your beliefs or your your mindset. And so, with training people. From the business side of, say, Microsoft or Amazon, there's completely different uh, personality difference, vibrancy of these people as compared to the people who work on the tech side who are a little bit more, I guess, like robotic or quiet, um, not as social. And so when you see people in business, like the salespeople and the marketing, you have to be dynamic and have to have some sort of social skill and vibrancy there in order to sell what you need to sell or convince people to buy this product. So if you start to compare the various ends of the spectrum, you can see how technology has um, damaged or detrimented people, uh, you know, who actually work in the industry. Now on being the consumer of it, uh, I would say that lately myself, I've seen such attachments to certain things because I've uh, you know, the growth isn't happening online. I personally don't have a bandwidth anymore to spend hours online. I just do my thing and I kind of get off, you know, maybe I check out my family's stuff, uh, whatever crap on the news feed. But I've come to notice that when I'm actually living my life in reality, my quality of life and my mindset becomes so much better. Uh, the the well-being is better. And when I spend more time online, I actually have noticed more depression and certain things like trying to grow a YouTube channel and 
trying to grow our Instagram, it's like, God dang it, like I'm doing everything that I can and it still can't grow or it grows and then it comes back and it grows and comes back. You don't know if followers are bots. On Instagram, you see this all the time. Uh, you know, you get like three followers and then the next day or within 48 hours, they're gone. Uh, a lot of them are bots or just fake followers. It's very, very superficial. And this starts to damage people's self-worth because they see people who are successful online um, and they know that they, uh, you know, they're trying the best that they can or they're trying to get some sort of freedom in their life, you know, awareness to their passion project and things aren't growing and it's damaging them. So that's one, another way that people are being kind of damaged. Now, the most important part of why the tech industry should either bring more awareness about mental health or actually use their platforms to support mental health is because the tech industry has also used social media as a, uh, you know, like a, a not a, pl well, like a playground, but like a science experiment lab. I like to give humans some credit. You know, people knew stuff back in World War II about genetics and manipulation of DNA and all this stuff like that, like eugenics. All that stuff has been known for so long. And so it's like things continuously recycle itself just with different characters or in different um, experiences. And so um, I noticed this a couple years ago that Facebook has targeted sad teens with kind of more depressive ads. That was an article that was published, I think, in the MIT tech review and last year when I was on LinkedIn I saw a ad or um, an article posted by somebody who was discussing how Instagram um, is starting to make people more depressed by changing the way their platform has been used. So what they started doing was generally every time somebody liked your picture you always got a push notification and so when they changed their ad or their their method algorithms whatever their methods of using the app you might only get four push notifications but if you logged in you've got something like 24 likes so the whole point of that article that was being discussed um, a year ago or maybe at this point a year and a half ago it was stating that Instagram was trying to get people to use the app more so one way of sucking them in was by sending you less push notifications so you kind of like mentally freak out like oh my god what happened now the algorithms are even smarter in 2020 and as you can see with some of the articles that I've posted on the screenshot um, you know a lot of this is rooted to money so Instagram has once again changed their algorithms to where you've seen this decrease of people who you've liked and in that article the girl explained it and I've also seen this in myself I had less followers like a year and a half ago and I would get anywhere between like 40 and 70 likes per picture and now I'm averaging between like 14 and 24. And so they're uh, targeting their algorithms and, and kind of promoting people who are using the app more. So once again, it sucks you into using the app more and this is very dangerous because this has a lot of effects on our emotional and mental well-being. It has a lot of effects on our self-worth. And all of it comes from a very super, superficial standpoint. So if you start to apply spiritual theory to the reality of what's happening through these algorithms, it's, it can be very damaging for people's self-worth because it's like they're trying and they're trying. It's almost like standing in quicksand. It's like... You're just trying to stay afloat and then you're sinking and your followers and all this, your traffic and everything is going down and you're just like constantly reaching and, and putting more time and energy in and spending more time on these platforms and it's really not benefiting you. It's, it's stressing people out and I've noticed this about myself recently and it's, it's really bad to where it's like, God, you know what, maybe... Maybe I just need to give up on these ideas of this online world and whatever and just continue to live my life and just work the normal jobs that are actually like paying the bills. So my point being is the manipulation part of it has been very um, 
difficult to comprehend as a normal human being because people, are, you know, people that work in the tech industry are smart and a lot of them know what they're doing. Now, you can't blame somebody if they're getting paid $150,000 plus stocks and all this stuff and health insurance. They're going to do what they have to do within their job just because they need that money and that job to survive. So to some degree, you don't, I don't blame them, but even in the world of marketing, like copy content writers have known what they've done for a long time. You kind of sell your soul to, to promote these certain things that you may agree or disagree with. And that's probably the same in the tech industry. But I think the manipulation of targeting ads to people who are depressed or changing the algorithm so it sucks you in like a little vacuum to make you stay online more and use the app more, only reward people who are using it more, it's very, very um, detrimental and dangerous, specifically for those people who are trying to run a business or bring more awareness. There's a lot of people today, they don't really care. You know, it's like they just share their thing and they leave. But for those who are actually trying to, to put some form of uh, success out there, it, it's very damaging. I do think these platforms can be used in a positive way to bring awareness, say, about mental health or if somebody is depressed, maybe an ad can target, um, you know, 10 ways to get psychological help or, you know, there could be actual benefits to using these things that to people who are depressed. But I think it's really bad when you target more of the younger crowd because they are more easily influenced because they're not at a growth maturity level to really understand the difference between all of these things. So targeting teenagers or getting them looped in and sucked in while they're young is going to have consequences when they become adults. It's drastically going to change the way we've lived and or have had our self-worth. So we've long known that, I mean, there's so much research out there that just shows how anxiety, depression, insomnia, all this stuff is linked to the overconsumption of social media or just the overuse of, like, staring at a television screen or computer screen. And a lot of what I've been talking about or thinking about the last couple of years is this battle between the artificial and the natural world. And so... When you're outside living life, getting vitamin D from the sun, that's the natural light that's created by God or the creator, if you believe that. And then when you are inside, um, sedentary, staring at a computer screen, looking at social media, looking at the arguments, um, that obviously, you know, it's like an artificial manipulation of not the natural ways of living. So the one last thing that I just wanted to mention is um, there is a book that was created in the 1970s that, uh, let me pull this up, it's called The Future of Shock by Alvin Toffler, and that was created in 1970. And so basically this book was, uh, you know, the screenshot from Wikipedia, it's just that society is undergoing massive changes and that there is just basically a form of information overload through the use of this uh, or the creation of this super industrial society that has more accelerated rates of technology use and social changes. And so it's basically just that common sense information overload. Like we cannot, I don't think, handle being right now um, because we're probably adapting our, our DNA to handle information overload, but we are not meant to see all this negative stuff all the time or everybody shouldn't have a voice or a platform. You know, social media has given people that platform, um, but, you know, it's basically just a rabbit hole or like, a, you know, the wolf's den of just egos fighting with each other and caring about opinions and in reality, your opinion isn't going to change someone else's opinion. You can promote things or share things to bring awareness that may eventually change someone's opinion, but generally arguing just it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so I really hope that the tech industry can take responsibility for mental health, specifically for their experiments and their 
manipulation toward vulnerable uh, populations and hopefully that they can um, promote more awareness for how to improve your health and well-being. But the reality is everything comes down to money and money always wins in this type of society. So who knows if that will uh, change because if people are well and healthy, there's no money to spend. There's no money to spend on you know, chronic wellness programs, uh, pharmaceuticals, spending the doctor. It, it's all interlinked together. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. If you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them below. Um, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.